have chosen to stick with us in this life seminar. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the reason why your greatest wealth is actually your health. But I'd like to open up with a story. Some years ago, a gentleman by the name of Terry Moreland bid for and purchased the Victor Valley Medium Community Correctional Facility, a private owned prison in California. Mr. Moreland gave his 500 inmates the option of a program called New Start that put them on a high nutrient plant-based diet combined with Bible study, occupational training, and anger management. Now, some of the prisoners thought that it was punishment enough to be in prison and being put on a plant-based diet was cruel and unusual punishment. Well, out of the 500 prisoners, 15% chose to continue with the standard American prison diet, while 85% decided to eat the plant-based diet. The recidivism rate for the inmates that chose the plant-based diet dropped during the seven years of the program from 50% all the way down to 2%. Sadly, Moreland's program was and it came to an end because of a trivial contract dispute with the state of California. But the example was set and it showed us what might be possible. Over the past couple of decades, a lot of research has been done on nutrition and its relationship with mental peak performance. Diet and lifestyle are essential factors in achieving peak mental performance. During our life seminar, we have spent time looking into the importance of mental health, parenting, and healthy relationships, finances, making smart choices. So let me ask you a question. Is it worth working on these important areas of our life, but then not having the physical and mental health to be able to enjoy your life? I want to encourage you to begin to think that Taking care of your physical and mental health is actually an investment in you. The greatest wealth that you have is your health. What good is it to succeed, have strong, healthy relationships, retire at 65, and be sick and diseased and die a few years later? Who wants that? Physical fitness and longevity are essential ingredients to live in a happy life. If you neglect your health, there is not enough money in the world to save you. I love this quote by Albert Schweitzer. He says, happiness is nothing more than good health and a bad memory. You know, what surprises many people is the, that the Bible has a lot to say about how to be healthy. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Daniel. Remember Daniel in the lion's den? Well, Back in Daniel chapter 1, we read that Daniel chose no alcohol and he ate a plant-based vegetarian diet. And as a result of his life choices, Daniel was found 10 times wiser than others in his day. Talk about a business edge. Wouldn't you like to be 10 times smarter than all of your co-workers? In the Bible, we see, Je we see Jesus spent a considerable portion of his ministry healing people. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in John 10.10. 10. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they would have it more abundantly. And in 3 John 1.2, we read, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. God is concerned with our health. God wants us to prosper. He wants us to have an abundant life. And it's hard to experience this abundant life when we are sick or have a disease. If you take the position that God created us, then who else would know best on how to take care of our bodies? Benjamin Franklin coined the expression, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. One of the best health principles that I could teach you can be summarized by the acronym New Start. New Start is a lifestyle program that follows eight simple points. Following these points will not only make you feel healthier, but it will also improve your mental health, 
save you money, and add years to your life. Incidentally, this New Start program is what Terry Moreland used in his Medium Community Correctional Facility. Now, let's break down New Start acronym. All right, let's break this down. N stands for nutrition. According to the CDC, over 40% of adults in the U.S. are obese. Obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. The annual medical cost in the U.S. for obesity is in the hundreds of billions. Now, the good news is that much of this is reversible. You see, the average caloric intake for moderately active adults is between 2,000 and 2,500 calories per day. Let's put this into perspective. It takes 3,500 calories to equal one pound of fat. So if you are consuming an extra 300 calories a day in 10 to 12 days, you will have gained a pound of fat. Well, the opposite is also true. If you have a caloric deficit of 300 calories a day, it will take you 10 to 12 days to lose a pound of fat. Now, think about it this way. A pumpkin spiced latte or maybe a peppermint mocha at your favorite coffee establishment, it can put you back 400 calories. If you were to add a medium sized blueberry muffin that also has 400 calories. And for many people, the blueberry muffin and the morning latte is their daily breakfast. Unfortunately, these empty calories will leave you susceptible to weight gain and scavenging for a second breakfast by 10 a.m. When it comes to our meals, there's an old saying, breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. Eating healthy is easier than you think. You see, most people eat a rotation of about six different meals a week. We're all creatures of habit. Eating healthier can be as simple as replacing six meals a week with healthier ones. Now, you may be thinking, but I don't have time to prepare healthy meals. You know, going through the drive through it's so much easier. Again, I want us to start thinking about our health as an investment in you and your family. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports the average person spends two hours and 45 minutes every single day watching TV. Now, what if we were to cut back and we spent 45 minutes a day preparing healthier meals? You see, the time is there. We just need to reprioritize. Now, let me share with you some basic uh, nutrition guidelines to follow. The first one is this. Eat a large, nutritious breakfast. Number two, eat 75% of your calories in the first two meals. Number three, have a light meal for dinner. Number four, drink plenty of water. Number five, consume 10 servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. Number six, eat a handful of nuts each day. Number seven, eliminate snacks. 20% of our calories come from snacking. Number eight, choose whole grains, whole wheat, brown, wine, uh, brown rice, wheat pasta. Number nine, avoid sugar-filled beverages. Number 10, eat more legumes. And number 11, learn to read food labels. You see, it takes an average of three to 14 days of a healthier diet to begin to see you know, noticeable change. Improvement will continue and peak at about three to six months. I love this quote from the French philosopher. He says, doctors are always working to preserve our health and cooks to destroy it, but the latter is often more successful. Now the E in New Start stands for exercise. Calculations have shown that for every one minute of exercise, you gain two minutes of longevity. Physical fitness is one of the most significant predictors for longevity. By taking care of your body now, it will pay huge dividends in the future. The CDC reports that only 23% of Americans get any light to moderate exercise. Regular exercise lowers our risk of many diseases such as obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, osteoporosis, cancer, anxiety, and depression. 
The Stanford School of Medicine tracked 500 older runners for more than 20 years. The study revealed that after 19 years, the runner's initial disability was 16 years later than the non-runners. Not only did the running delay any disability by 16 years, but those that ran lived longer, had better health, less disease, and greater memory. Now, some may think, but I don't have time to exercise. Remember that number we looked at a few moments ago? The Bureau of Labor and Statistics reported that the average person spends two hours and 45 minutes every single day watching TV. The CDC reports the average adult only spends about 17 minutes a day exercising. Let's spend more time away from TV and more time exercising. Now, maybe you're wondering, well, how can I burn 150 calories with moderate exercise? Because this is a, a healthy place to start. Well, you can play volleyball for 45 minutes and you'll burn 150 calories. You can go for a brisk walk for 30 minutes, or you can rake leaves or do some active gardening for 30 minutes. You can go swim laps for 20 minutes or play basketball for 15 to 20 minutes, or you can run a mile and a half, which should take you about 15 minutes. Exercise not only helps you physically, but it will help you achieve mental peak performance. Another study involving humans with major depressive disorder in a 16-week treatment program found that exercise was just as effective in reducing depression as antidepressants. On average, it takes about one week of daily exercise before depressive symptoms begin to improve in most people. Now, the W in the word New Start stands for water. Water is the key ingredient used by virtually every area of our bodies. Your body is 75% water and your brain is 85% water. Water is virtually free and there are no side effects. When taken in the correct amount, water can cure or reduce the incidence of many of today's diseases. These diseases include kidney stones, gallbladder disease, constipation, urinary tract infections, high blood pressure, glaucoma. A study in the American Journal of Epidemiology revealed that those who drank five plus cups of water a day had significantly less death from coronary heart disease compared to those who drank only two glasses of water a day. Think about that. Drinking five plus cups of water a day will cut the risk of coronary heart disease in half. So maybe you're wondering, well, how much water should I drink a day? Here's a simple formula. Take your body weight and divide it in half. The number you get is the amount of water in ounces that you should consume every single day. Now the S in the word new start stands for sunlight. Now in the Pacific Northwest, we're used to seeing gray skies. You know that you're from the Pacific Northwest when the phrase, the mountain is out today, isn't a strange statement. Plus you rarely wash your car because I mean, after all, it's gonna get washed by the rain tomorrow. Well, due to our gray skies and shortened days, it can be a challenge to get enough vitamin D in the winter months. This can cause some to experience seasonal anxiety disorder or SAD, SAD. This disorder comes at the same time every year and it can cause you to feel sad or moody. Well, a daily vitamin D supplement can help. Now, the best supplementation remains a good sun bath. Exposure to sunlight helps increase the brain's release of a hormone called serotonin. Serotonin is associated with boosting one's mood. In addition to the joy of feeling the warm sun on our back, the sun is important because it provides us with vitamin D. Vitamin D is an excellent antioxidant. Researchers at the University of Washington found that moderate amounts of sunlight can be beneficial in cancer prevention. Those in northern states that receive less sunshine had colon cancer rates 50 to 80% higher than those in southern states that received more sunshine. Now the T in New Start stands for temperance. 
The American poet Henry Longfellow said, joy, temperance, and repose slam the door on the doctor's nose. Too much of anything is bad. Take sunlight, for example. It only takes a few minutes of full exposure to get your full vitamin D. Too much time in the sun and, well, you're going to get sunburn, which can lead to cancer. Temperance is about practicing moderation when we feel our lives are out of control. Temperance can help us regain direction. So how do we practice temperance in our own lives? Well, a challenging place to practice temperance is in our diets. For example, I loved baked goods. I love donuts. And the Donut House in Anacortes is my absolute favorite. And on occasions, I'll take my kids there to enjoy some baked goods. But while I'm there, I have to remind myself, practice temperance, right? I'm only going to eat one donut. Another area to practice temperance is with our reliance on technology. I can recall eating dinner at a family restaurant where I witnessed another family sitting around the table and they were all glued to their cell phones. Mom, dad, the teenage kids, they were all glued to their cell phones. Now, it's healthy for families to engage in real conversation and not stare at a small screen. I thought, what if they took their phones and they put them in the middle of the table and the first person to grab their phone had to pay for the meal. Remember, temperance is about practicing balance and control in your life. Now, the A in New Start stands for air. Let me ask you a question. How long can you go without breathing? Well, the world record was set back in 2012 by a German freediver who held his breath for more than 22 minutes. Now, for most people, we would die after just a few minutes. Now, when it comes to air, air is approximately 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. The optimum air to breathe is oxygen-rich, negatively charged air. A charged atom is called an ion, and an ion can either be negatively or positively charged. These negatively charged ions are often referred to as the happy ions because they lead to better moods, more energy, and a sense of well-being. Have you ever noticed that after going for a hike in the outdoors or spending time at a lake, you feel refreshed? This is because negative ions tend to congregate in the outdoors. Where in polluted cities, crowded areas, and confined spaces such as offices, industrial areas, schools, and cars, you find the highest concentration of unhealthy positive ions. Studies show that when we breathe oxygen with a high negative ion concentration, we are less likely to be depressed, we sleep better, and we have more energy. High positive ion concentration can lead to high levels of anxiety, higher levels of depression. So how do we get a higher amount of negative ions? Well, let me share with you some ideas. One of the things that you can do is you can go to a place where there are higher concentrations of negative ions. Well, an example would be the forest or the beach. When you go out there, be very intentional and take three to five deep breaths of clean air. Weather permitting, open a window in your home. At night, keep a bathroom window open to allow those happy ions to come into your room. When you're at work, step outside every hour and you know get some fresh air. On the weekend, spend time out in nature breathing that clean, fresh air. Now the R in New Start stands for rest. What's the longest that you have gone without sleep? The world record is 11 days and 25 minutes. What would happen to your body if you decided to stop sleeping? Well, tests that were done in lab rats, it was shown that rats would die quicker from sleep deprivation than starvation. Studies show that if you are not getting enough sleep at night, your immune system will suffer. Quality sleep is necessary for a robust immune system. Without adequate sleep, you are three times more likely to become sick. Those who lack proper sleep tend to eat more. 
as well as live shorter lives. Sleep deprivation is also a significant factor in poor decision making and decreased mood. If you want to have physical and mental peak performance, you need to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep. Now, you may be wondering, well, how much sleep do I need? Well, you'll notice, you know, from newborns need 18, children 12, teens 9, adults 8, senior citizens need about 9 hours of sleep. Now, in adults, when you get less than 7 hours of sleep, the rate of death in women goes up by 21%, and in men, it goes up by 26%. So how do we get a better night's sleep? Well, here's what the experts say. They say, turn off the lights. This helps your body to release melatonin. Exposure to light after dusk can reduce melatonin levels by up to 71%. Avoid electronic devices. Lying in bed with a tablet or a cell phone hinders your body from wanting to fall asleep. Now, I'll be honest, I've been <laughs> guilty of that one. Stick to a schedule. The sleep that you get before midnight is much more beneficial than the sleep after midnight. I remember in college, if I had a test the next day, I did something that my classmates thought was crazy. I would study in the evening, then I would go to bed early. Rather than pulling an all-nighter and drinking you know, caffeinated beverages and, and being tired the next day, I would go to bed early, I would get up early to continue my studying, eat a healthy breakfast, Doing this helped me feel refreshed, rested, alert, and ready to take on the test. Also, you want to relax and get comfortable. Develop a routine. Now, part of that routine may want to avoid eating right before you go to bed. Something else that helps promote sleep is being active. Daily exercise and physical activity helps promote better sleep. Something else to consider is be grateful. Consider closing the day with a prayer and, and think about what it is that you're thankful for. You know, Benjamin Franklin said, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. We are now at T and T stands for trust. Does trust in a divine power play a role in your health? Dr. Newberg's book, how God Changes Your Brain shows that spiritual practices are good for our bodies. He goes on to explain that prayer and meditation play a role in strengthening the circuits in our brain, which makes us more socially alert, lowers anxiety, depression, and neurological stress. In fact, a study titled Religious Involvement and in U.S. Adult Mortality showed that those who never attend religious activities exhibited two times the risk of death compared to those that attend religious activities more than once a week. This translates into a seven-year difference in the life expectancy between those who never attend religious activities and those who attend religious activities more than once a week. Now, this may seem like a stretch in logic, but attending regular religious services is comparable to not smoking. Another study shows that regular church attendees are more likely to stop smoking, increase physical activity, become more social, stay married. The reason for these health benefits is that organized religion provides a support system that helps improve overall health. You see, we were created to be a part of a community. Now, my suggestion to you, consider attending a local church in your area. Now, I'm happy to help you find a local church that I myself would want to attend. Today, there are a lot of different diets and fads and weight loss health gimmicks. But in tonight's presentation, we learned that there are simple things that we can do to improve our health. And these health principles cannot be patented and, and sold to make anybody rich. They are basic and most of them are free. And all they take is a commitment by you to make your physical and mental health a priority. Baseball icon Mickey Mantle once said, if I knew I was going to live this long, 
I would have taken better care of myself. Friends, you are not alone. And together we can start doing what is right. I love this verse in Philippians 4.13. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's go to God in prayer and let's ask him to help us live a healthier life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we close in prayer, Lord, we touched on a number of areas on how to help improve our physical and our mental health. We looked at in this series of presentations, a very holistic approach to improving the major areas of our life to help us improve in our mental health. And Father, I pray especially for those who have continued with us on this journey, that they wouldn't stop, that they would continue to make small changes and to apply these basic principles to their life. Lord, by your power, I pray that you would help them change their family tree. Bless them in the decisions that they have made. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.